In this video, we'll be talking about TCP's flow control and connection management. So what is flow control? Flow control ensures that the, that the TCP sender does not overwhelm the TCP's receiver. Or in other words, the TCP the receiver controls the sender so that the sender won't overflow the receiver's buffer by transmitting too much data too fast. So the way it is implemented is the following. The receiver advertises the free buffer space by, in, by including the RWND value in the TCP header from the receiver to the, uh, to the sender. So what the receiver tells is this is like there is a, tells the sender the amount of free space free buffer space it has. The sender then uses this R, RWND value to determine the amount of unacknowledged data to the sender uh, to the receiver. So the sender use the R, RWND value to determine to determine number of unacknowledged data that does, uh, that can be sent to the uh, receiver. This is going to guarantee that the receiver's buffer does not overflow. And this is the principle of flow control. And the flow control ensures that the packets are not are not lost at the receiver because of the sender sending too much data too fast. Having briefly con uh, talked about flow control, we'll now talk about connection management. Now, before TCP is a connection-oriented protocol, so before sending data, connection has been has to be established between the sender and the receiver. So before exchanging any data, hand, there has to be a handshake uh, where the receiver and the sender, the sender and the receiver, acknowledge e uh, each other and agree on the connection parameters. So how does this work? In TCP, there is a three-way handshake. You might be wondering why a three-way handshake is necessary, because if you go for a two-way handshake, it is it is possible that because of the delays in the in the internet, the connection establishment will not happen properly. So when a TCP three-way handshake is required, so let's assume that uh, and these are the two uh, two clients. So basically, there's a client here and there's a server, and they want to establish a TCP connection. So first, the client wants to uh, establish a TCP connection to the server. So both of them are initially listening, and the client sends a sends a segment to the uh, to the TCP server. So it sets the SYN bit equal to one and chooses a, a sequence number equal to X. The receive the the server now acknowledges uh, this, and what it says that what uh, and in the segment that it sends back to this client, it sets the SYN bit equal to one. It chooses a new sequence number equal to Y. It sends acknowledgement equal bit equal to one, and you sets the acknowledgement number equal to X plus one. That is because it uh, the sequence number that was received from the client is X. So the acknowledgement from the server includes X plus one. When the so when the <coughs> when the when the client receives this message, what is does is the connection is established from the perspective of the client, but then the client sends another message back to the to the to the server in which it sets the sin bit equal to zero, and the acknowledgement number is sent to y is set to y plus one because the sequence number in the pre in the pack in the segment sent from the server to the receiver has a sequence number of y. When this uh, segment is received by the server, the connection is established at the server as well. After this kind of three-way handshake is <clears throat> handshake is done, the connection is established between the client and the server, and the client and server can now send data to each other. Similarly, when uh, the connection has to be closed, handshake messages have to be exchanged. So the, both the server and the client have to tip, have to notify uh, each other that they want to terminate a connection. So the so this is uh, done by ensure with the use of the fin bit. So let's see how this works. So let's assume that the server wants to terminate the connection. The client wants to terminate the connection to the server. So it sends a TCP segment with the fin bit equal to one. So the client is sending a segment with the fin bit equal to set to one and the sequence number of say X to the server. So what it's good, what's good, what is going to happen is the, the, the server is not going to respond this and acknowledge that it received the fin bit so it acknowledged that <clears throat> acknowledges the receiver of the message with the acknowledgement bit set to one and the acknowledgement number set to x uh, x plus one note that the, there the these are two different things acknowledgement there is an acknowledgement bit and the acknowledgement number the acknowledgement bit is set to one now at the, when the acknowledgement bit is set to one 
the, <clears throat> the client can no longer send data and is waiting for the server to close. Now the client, the client can, the server could still send data, but then after some time, it's when it's done sending its data, it wants to, the server also wants to close the connection to this client. So it sends a message with the fin bit equal to one and the sequence number equal to y. After this point, the, client, the server can no longer send data as well. When the client uh, receives this fin bit from the server, it's, it acknowledges the receipt of this message from the from the server by having an ACK bit equal to 1 and an acknowledgement number equal to Y plus 1. So it sends that message and once that message is received by the server, the server clo uh, closes its connection. The client still waits for some amount of time, which is two times the max segment uh, lifetime and then closes the connection. This additional wait time is, uh, is used to wait for messages which may not have been received by the client. With this, we will we will conclude.